there's the sign to tell us it's closed, 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 and closed. So oh, just soak that in. Fresh water, waterfall, beautiful substrate to camp on. Camping right beside the river with a Boab tree in the background. This, this is what I've been waiting for in the Kimberley. Awesome! We're sitting here on the western end of the Gib. This is the prison Boab tree, and we're about to head down the Gib River Road. She is still closed from Mount Barnet, or basically from the Barnet River. However, that's a few hundred kilometers away, so we should be able to get a couple of cool things under our belt, and maybe she'll open up. If not, we'll just have to swing around and find another exit, I guess. This is bloody awesome. That tree would be six meters in diameter, probably. So we can get as far as uh, Mount Barnet at the moment, or the Barnet River, and that is as far as we'd be going. It's a few hundred kilometers away, so it'll take us a while to get there, but it is still closed. Have a look at this Boab. I'm standing on a branch at the moment. And there is the actual tree. It is enormous. That's the branch I was standing on. Give you a little bit of an idea of the girth of that. <laughs> it's huge. And there's the trunk. They are such a neat tree. I have a feeling we're gonna have a lot of video of Boab trees. So if you're not into these, maybe this isn't the channel for you. If you are into Boabs, strap yourself in because there is going to be some filmage. There's the size of the truck in relation to this guy. Crazy. We have just jumped off the gib and we're heading to a little spot called Poulton Pool, which is only about maybe five kilometers off the road maximum, I guess. Going through a little cow paddock to get out there. Do you feel like a little bit of early lunch out there, hon? Yeah. I could do early lunch too. You could do seven lunches. <laughs> I could do seven lunches. <laughs> we haven't even hit the dirt on the gib yet. We're probably 40 kilometers from the western end of the Gibb River Road at Derby. I'll bet we're even farther than that in. Yeah, maybe, maybe 50K. Just have to dodge poos on the way back here. Well, we're going for a look because we only have things to do between here and where the road is closed. Okay, cows, sorry to break up the party. We'd just like to get through, please. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse us. Pardon me. Thanks, guys. And when we come back out, they'll be right there. <laughs> yes, they will. They have all of this, as far as the eye can see, both directions. They're about a kilometer away from Poulton Pool now. Getting in a little bit of a forest of Boabs, which is kind of neat. I don't think I've ever driven through a Boab forest before. It's like we're driving down a water course, isn't it? familiar sound of scrapey scrapies. Pulled our mirrors in and we're now in skinny mode. Try and squeeze through these trees. This is a beautiful little spot here. There's waterfalls and rapids and everything. There's the picnic spot right there. This is stunning. We're just having a little bit of a drive along this May River, I think it is called. I'm actually going to take it out of four-wheel drive on that rock. I don't want to get the diffs bound up. This is solid rock. Okay folks, I gotta share my excitement about this campsite. It is unbelievable. It's in our top three. Why is it in our top three? One, there's a four-wheel drive track that you need to get in here on. You saw that in the video on the way in. Two, we're camped underneath of this beautiful massive Boab. Three, the camping surface is solid rock. So, no sand on your feet, no sand in the tent. Still not convinced it's in the top three? Four, there's no bugs. Zero. No flies, no mozzies, no midges. Still not convinced, okay? Number five, we are camped up beside a fresh water running river with a set of rapids and waterfalls. 
unbelievable. I can see down in the water a bunch of archer fish swimming along through there. I'm gonna break a fishing rod out a little bit later and try my luck. I'm probably familiar with this type of fishing more than anything. It's the closest thing that resembles what I'm used to back in Canada, but what a spot. Unbelievable. Oh, and last but not least, did I not mention this? There's no bugger here. How amazing! There's a feral cat here. I just came up here to video this and came across that little feral kitten. Beautiful. Terry snagged it in the tree. Oops. Saved it. side of those falls if I can get over there. I did see a very small crocodile down in this lower water. He was about 12 inches long. I couldn't tell whether he was a freshie or a salty. He dove before I could get close enough. But there's signs everywhere around here saying be crocwise so you gotta know they're here of course. A satellite image that I've got shows this upper reaches here dry and a track goes directly across the river and you can see where it comes up on the other side. The water is completely fresh up on this top side. It wouldn't surprise me if down there, the bottom area of the May River is brackish. That is one advantage of hitting the gib very, very shortly after it's flooded. You get to see things like this. I bet you in another week or two, this will be completely dry. There's barely no algae growth on the rocks and they're not slippery at all. So you know they haven't been underwater for too very long. And there's camp across the river beside that giant boab tree. See whether I can get across this section here. I don't see any snapping handbags. That doesn't mean they're not here. There's camp just on the other side of the waterfall. And there's our main waterfall chute. That'd probably be the last thing that's running after this whole shebang dries up. I'll try my luck fishing down there in the calmer water a bit later on. It's kind of out of place in my head, these giant boab trees beside a freshwater running river with rapids. But there they are, I'm looking right at them, so I gotta believe it. Somebody carved their initials in that boab behind the truck and it was dated May 1965.
following morning. I've been fishing this river for a little bit now. No luck. So I'm heading up towards this top pool, which is the actual permanent water source. Very mindful of snakes and crocodiles, especially in this top pool. It's very calm and looks quite deep and a wee bit murky. This is pretty cool. I've never actually fished at the base of a boab tree before. When I say fish, I use that term very loosely. Well, no luck on this fishing excursion, so I'm going to head back over to camp, which is right over there on the opposite bank. But my goodness, what a stunning location. This pool runs up there a fair distance, probably at least a kilometer by the looks of it, and I'm sure it is loaded with fish for those individuals that know how to fish. Okay, Tear, what's up? Well, Jill, you just sent me stand by 665 videos. Tear <laughs> <laughs> dropped them to you. <laughs> yep. oh, that took a long time. Now I gotta get them off my phone onto the laptop. Oh, that's always fun. That's a lesson, lesson in patience. Yeah. <laughs> Jaffa Adventures, Mother Nature has certainly thrown us a little bit of a curveball. We're here camped at the May River. Tonight will be our fourth night. Unfortunately, the gib is still blocked at the Barnet River. And now the main highway is blocked at Fitzroy Crossing. That's had a couple of effects, but the biggest one that impacts us is that there's a massive amount of tourists built up at the Derby end of the gib and at the Kununurra end of the gib. And as soon as the Gibb River opens, those tourists with their caravans and their children and all the rest of it are gonna flood into this area. That isn't particularly appealing to us. Secondly, the four wheel drive tracks that run off of the Gibb, so for example, the track going up to the Mitchell River, uh, the Kurunji track, those sorts of things, they're all closed still. And we've got no idea when those are going to open. We've only got about 20 days left before we need to be back home in Queensland. So our plans have changed significantly. When the Gib does open, we're gonna give the Kimberley a miss altogether, and we're gonna come back here in another year in the dry outside of school holidays. So the plan now, once Fitzroy Crossing opens, is we're gonna make a beeline for the Northern Territory. We're gonna make our way into Queensland along the Gulf and then head back down south to Brisbane. Not quite the way we envisage the trip coming to an end, but hey, that's mother nature, isn't it? I know that there's a lot of people that were planning on doing the canning during this period and the Tanami Road is still closed at Billaluna and you can't get into the north end of the canning either. So we're not the only ones with our plans that have been somewhat disrupted. But what we can say is this last five months has been absolutely amazing. And for those regular viewers, for those people that have followed us on this entire trip and have watched it because you enjoy Jill and I's company, I sincerely thank you for that. It's very humbling to think that we've got people out there that are enjoying what we're doing and enjoying us as individuals. So once again, thanks for that. It's absolutely humbling. I have put a lot of time on the road doing video editing where I could be fishing or lounging around in the sun or having a beer or whatever. And I know that there's individuals out there watching this that have appreciated that. And that's one of my main motivations and reasons for spending the time and the effort to try and get this content out to you guys. On this five month trip, we haven't missed a week yet. So let's see whether we can keep up that cadence. Catch you guys soon. Well, after seven days, six nights and seven days, we are leaving our little waterfall Boab camp on the May River because the Fitzroy Crossing is open. So we, so as I stated earlier, we're gonna blow past the Kimberleys and head into the Northern Territory. Don't know whether we'll get into the Territory today, but we're heading in that general direction. We pulled off the main road, heading into a place called the Raft Boab Quarry. Well, I've got a pin on my map for this place, and I can't remember why, but I remember it being pretty cool. Pulling in, and we're going to have ourselves some lunch here. Lots of little campsites everywhere, isn't there? Mm -hmm. And there are a few Boabs around, so 
I can understand the Boab part of the quarry. And there's the quarry. This is the RAF Boab quarry. I've just thrown the drone up and I'll show you a little bit from an aerial perspective. But it is an absolutely stunning spot. You got these rocky hills, very similar to what you'd see at Winjana Gorge. Beautiful crystal clear water in the quarry itself. And of course you got Boabs hanging out everywhere. I don't know what the story is behind this quarry. If anybody does, I'd be really interested to know it. But given that it's called the RAF Boab Quarry, I can only think that it's got something to do with the Air Force. We are going to push on from here, heading towards Fitzroy Crossing now. In the next 12 months, they'll have the actual high-level bridge finished, and it won't be cut like it has been for us for the past seven or eight days. But right now, there's only a low-level crossing. There's actually two low-level crossings. There's a gravel one, which is a single lane, and that is now open. And there's a bitumen one, which is a dual lane, and that is only open to 10 ton and plus vehicles. So we're gonna be taking the gravel crossing, single lane. Hopefully there's not too many people on either side, because I think they're only letting 30 cars through in a go. But Raf Boab Quarry, I rate it. So here we are crossing across the low-level crossing on the Fitzroy River. Probably by the time you guys watch this video, this will never be used again because they'll have finished the high-level crossing, the actual bridge. So we should never see some flooding there again. But this river here was the reason that we were camped up at our little Boab waterfall camp for seven days just to get across this little sucker. The Gip River Road is still not open. It's cut at the Barnet River and they don't expect that to be open until uh, probably another two or three days. So as I've said in previous clips, we're gonna have to give the Kimberleys a miss and make our way home. Today we are treating ourselves to a little bit of luxury in quotation marks. We've grabbed a hotel room in Halls Creek. This particular motel, the Kimberly, is not a bad little spot. They got some good pub food there and the compound itself is surrounded by an electrified fence so it's pretty safe. We're heading into the Jenny Moon area of Keep River which in language that I can understand is Keep River Gorge. And we're going to do the Keep River Gorge walk. And have some lunch because we're hungry. Yes, yes, have some lunch. Good idea, Jill. Day use area. That's us. Back on foot again, are we, hon? We are. Where are we heading to? <laughs> Don't ask me. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to even be in this video. <laughs> uh, I'm just gawping around. <laughs> the Keep River Gorge, remember? Where are we going? Keep River Gorge. Okay, well, I didn't know. Look at that bow up. Look at those bow up. They are very, very cool. That's the stuff I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are an amazing tree. This is a spectacular Boab. Have a look at Jill trying to put her arms around that. <laughs> that is amazing. Yes. We want to take it home and put it in our front yard. So cool. I was reading in the park visitor information that the Boabs are deciduous, so they lose their leaves in the dry season but there's a very thin layer of chlorophyll underneath the bark, so they still do photosynthesize during the winter to stay alive. That's pretty cool. All the more reason to like you, Mr. Boab. We are just getting into the gorge, and of course we got some water in the creek, and there are crocodile signs up, warning of crocodiles. Little boogers get everywhere. So unbelievably cool. Yeah, starting to get into some pandanus. At least I think it's pandanus. That's what I would call pandanus in Queensland along the coast. All of this stuff here is what is called zebra rock. This is a really good sample of zebra rock right here. And how do you know it's zebra rock, hon? I read it in the information center. Nice one. <laughs> Nice one. I read it too. I just didn't have the memory to recall it. Jill and I are still on this Keep River track, Keep River Gorge track, and we just bumped into a subscriber by the name of Jack, which was really, really cool. So, Jack, by the time that you see this, I trust that your travels have been going really well and you've had an amazing time. Yes, and your children were so well behaved and patient. <laughs> yeah, they were. Yep, beautiful kids. Well done guys. We've reached the end of this walk. Have a look at this little guy. 
I love you. Got the alfalfa hair happening. The dangly arms. The dangly feet. <laughs> really cool. I'm sure there's some significance there, but that's beyond me. Here's a few petroglyphs in the gorge. There's a sign in the interpretive center that talks about these areas here where there's a depression in that rock. Let's see if I can pick the angle with the GoPro, but that's where they grab a stone and the seeds and rub it and crush it up against that rock. Some really good examples on this one here as well. One here, another big one there. Big depression there, big depression there. That's a lot of grinding to put a depression in a rock like that. This is the end of the line. That's where all those petroglyphs and rock paintings were. And the cliff goes up there. She's a good 200 meters probably. And we can't walk past that sign there because that goes into a sacred area. Okay, Jilly, time for a U-bolt and head back. Sounds good to me, I'm thirsty. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I've enjoyed the walk, but I'm ready for a refreshment. <laughs> yep, yep, indeed. Terrace grabbing a drink. Of the non-hopped variety. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning campers. Jill is at the base of one massive boab. We are on the Jarnum walk, the Jarnum loop walk. We found a half a boab shell. It is tiny. Yeah, this walks a six or seven K loop. I think it's grade four because of the length, not because of the difficulty, but who knows? We'll see that soon enough. We are setting out just before sunrise, as opposed to yesterday's walk into the Keep, Keep River Gorge, where we cooked. It's 7.19 a.m. and it feels really weird, like hardly anybody's up in camp or anything. We switched an hour and a half time zone yesterday, coming from Queen, um, Western Australia into the Northern Territory, and so we've been awake. Why do we have two hours? <laughs> we have. It was pitch black when we got up. <laughs> it was still pitch black a half an hour ago, practically. <laughs> so we've been itching to get on the road because we got places to go and things to do today. So. I think that's a cabbage tree palm. I think we might have one of those in our yard somewhere. We're only 500 meters, maybe a kilometer maximum in. The sun is just starting to come up and hit that ridge. And it's lighting it up. It's like it's on fire. <laughs> and that is how recent it was wet. The track has turned into bog here. There's a couple of small hills there, sort of reminiscent of the bungles. And it looks like we got a little diversion track around here to the left. See that? I got left and right, right. Ah, yes. Bog sticks. Let's not hope that Jill falls off. <laughs> <laughs> the sun is just hitting the tips of these boabs. Is that sort of classic Northern Australia or what? Love it. Here's a piece of the inside of a boab. They would grind that up and eat it in like a paste, I think. But I imagine it not having the nicest flavor and texture. But if it's the difference between life and death, I'd eat pretty much anything. Here we are at the intersection. We're going to turn right and do the loop walk, which comes around and it actually spits you out on that ningly, like, ningly gap. So we will see that as well. All this area has been very recently burnt. I mean, it rained here, what, two weeks ago? And this fire has happened after that rain because there's still ash on the ground that you can tell hasn't been wet. Just about to walk through a really pretty archway. I have a look here. Beautiful waddle. Back into the pandanus again. And it is very similar to the pandanus we have in Queensland because it's got those nuts on it. And that's what those nuts are made out of. This is just one section. You put a whole bunch of these all together, wrap them into a big sphere, and you've got the big pandanus nut. There goes Terry. Those yellow flowers in the foreground, that's all k -pock, And they've got little pods on them. These trees don't have the pods on them yet, but 
when those flowers mature, there's little seed pods, kind of about the size of a choco. We are pretty much finished on the flat now. <laughs> We're getting ready, I think, to climb up these ridges to the actual lookout part. It's still nice and cool here in the shade, but when we get out there in the sun, I'm sure we'll cook. It's supposed to be 31 today, and this is the 10th of July. Go. Heading to the lookout. Charnum Lookout, 150 meters. That's us. And then we're gonna end, head down to this Ningly Gap. It's like a little itch. It's a yeah, niggly it's itch. We are at the top of the lookout. That's that bungle formation in the foreground there. And they run off into another section over there as well. Throw the drone up and have a look-see. And yes, you can fly drones in Keep River with a permit. They're very bungle-like. They're formed the exact same way but the bungles are more spectacular. These are great, don't get me wrong. They're a little bit different. They're craggier. Maybe they're older than the bungles. They're not as geometric as the bungles, but they absolutely have their own character. And the track now is going to walk down to the base of them. So let's hook into that. Trying to get some video of you here, Terry, but you're in sun rays. <laughs> sun. I yeah. the sun, huh? Okay. I think you are the sweat by the look of your back. <laughs> what direction is that? Yeah, what direction is that? Right. No, you just turned left. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Okay. These guys here that I called cabbage palms earlier, I wonder whether they're the Livestonia palms. I don't think so, because they're gray. And I didn't think the Livestonia palms were gray, but I could be wrong. There's a pretty turkey bush in flower, that purple. I can smell them here. I can't smell them here. <laughs> <laughs> Man knows. It's a thing. I can't smell them at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said it's man knows. There's a little rock formation next to the trail here, and it looks like these rocks were placed like cans on the top, but they're just naturally occurring. There's the flower of the kapok, and those are those little pods that I was talking about, but they're very small. They get much larger, like the size of a choco. The closer we get to these bungle formations, the more we get into these palms, and that can only be water-driven, hey? Run off from those ranges sustaining all of these palms who are water-loving little critters. There's an interpretive sign. Let me read it and educate myself. Yep, I have now been educated by the sign and that's exactly what it is. There's a water course coming through here and more water, different plant species, pandanus and these cabbage palms. We have reached the bungles, I'll call them. Just one bungle, not a bungle bungle, single bungle. That here's a useless sign because, boy, you'd have to be a bit silly to climb this. <laughs> <laughs> or a professional rock. Yeah, that's crazy. They, want, they probably think people want to get up in this little cave area here. I don't know. Not me. There is an emu on the side of this bungle cliff. I know this because I read the interpretive sign. And this guy here is called the Great Snake. That's not what I see when I say a snake. Great. Poor little Boab. Well, I wouldn't call him a little, but poor Boab. He's tipping over. I think he's heading out that way to get some sunshine because these cliffs are shadowing him. Jill found some bugs. Native bees or something. What is that? Yeah, those are all native bees. There's a native beehive right there. There's a little hole. Cool. The great thing about the Australian native bees is they don't sting. Native bees at the bottom of the Boab. Blue sky and sunshine at the top of the Boab. <laughs>